Hey y'all, hi. So some weeks ago on one of my drugstore makeup videos, I got a comment that I wish I had taken a screenshot of so that I could actually cite it right now or even read it. I can't find it. It's lost to the annals of YouTube, but I remember what it said. It was a comment from one of you saying that you'd like to see me go on a search for weird, muted, mucky, mixed, subtle, grayed out tertiary colors at the drugstore. Editor tutorial colors. That's not exactly what you said in the comment. That's not word for word. But the situation is this. Those are the colors that I prefer. If you've been watching me for a while and you've seen me talk about especially lip colors and cheek colors, but also eye makeup and also clothes. If you've seen me talk about color at all, then you know that I have a preference for colors that are somewhat off the beaten path. Grungy is probably the most mainstream term for the kind of colors that I'm into in makeup. So this comment was saying, Hannah, why don't you go on hunt at the drugstore for these kinds of colors and see what you can find. And I love that idea and that's what I did. I went to Ulta, I stuck to the drugstore section and I was just seeking out those kinds of colors. And for this video, I actually just stuck to lip color. And if this video goes well, maybe I'll branch out and I'll try it with other types of makeup. So I have the results of my expedition here. I haven't opened any of them. I'm going to be discovering with you if they read at all on the lips as they looked in the tubes and some of them in the online swatches because you know, I was there in Ulta like on my phone, making sure that they were at least weird adjacent. It's sometimes hard to tell when you're like looking through the plastic or the cardboard. We're gonna find out together. I'm gonna be swatching them all on my lips. This is like lip swatch party and we'll see if any of them satisfy. If this is your first time watching my channel, what a video with which to start. This isn't all that I do. I love to review makeup. I also make videos about fashion, but it's not always new stuff. You know what I mean? It's not always just shopping, shopping, shopping. For me, thoughtful consumerism actually means spending a lot of time with the makeup that you already own. So I do a lot of different kinds of beauty and fashion content, but I try to keep it balanced and grounded. If that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, so I have eight products to get through. About half of them are glosses or like gloss type things. I was surprised by how many grungy seeming glosses I was able to find at the drugstore. And then the other four are more like bullet lipsticks, but there's a pretty wide range of formulas, like types of formulas. And I'm going to try to basically go from the ones that I think are the least likely to stain, like the ones that'll be easiest to remove all the way through to the ones that'll be the harder to remove. So kind of from gloss to bullet and from light to dark. First up, this juice Juvia's Place Glass Lip Gloss in the shade Flower Girl. I haven't even opened this. I looked up some swatches and they had a little illustration on the display. This is not at all what I thought that it would be. I was under the impression that this was like kind of a grungy gray violet. That's the color that all of the model's lips looked in all of the pictures that I saw. And it's actually transparent right out of the gate, kind of failing right out of the gate. I'll still put it on, but it's hard to imagine it's gonna be grungy based on this. So I thought it was going to be like a purplish taupe based on the imagery. It is clear blue with a violet flip and it smells like cotton candy. This isn't at all what I thought I was going to be getting into. So you could kind of make a case that this is like grungy for a really, really sheer lip color. Like it has given a slight, ever so slight murky taupey cast to my lips because it's purple and blue, but it's much less intense than it looked in the imagery. Like I feel like the imagery was enhanced in order to try to give like a really clear sense of what this is, but I wouldn't necessarily call this a grungy gloss. You know, it's not super pink. It, it's muted compared to a lot of lip glosses with color in them. And again, on the very transparent, the very clear side of the spectrum of grunge, maybe. So maybe it's good to have something like this, like this subtle in the mix. But for me, it's not enough, right? Like this is not quite what I was going for. The gloss itself is nice. I wish it weren't so so sweet, like so cotton candy scented, but now that I have it on, it's not sticking itself in my nose too much. It feels nourishing. It almost feels a little bit plumping. Maybe that's just because my lips were super dry and they're really happy to have something on them. And it has that slick, thick, kind of jelly-like finish that some glosses have these days that I actually quite like. Okay, next up is a gloss from Essence. A couple of you mentioned Essence in the comments on those drugstore videos as a brand I think that makes good glosses. I actually, I don't know if this is the exact exact one, but I picked this one because of the color. The Essence Extreme Care Hydrating Glossy Lip Balm. 
It looks like it has maybe a little more opacity than some glosses, you know? It's in shade 03, Milky Cocoa. Oh my gosh. Milky Cocoa, where have you been all my life? It has kind of a weird smell, almost like a spice or something. What a color. What a color. I feel like if I came out with my own makeup, I would put this color in it. Because it's super pale, very neutral, doesn't lean orange. If anything, maybe it leans like, on me, it's leaning like a tiny bit pink, but I don't think that's because it has pink in it. I think it's just so neutral. And you know, it's a cream finish, but it's sheer enough or it's sort of melting down to being something sheer enough that it's not causing like lines of really super pale pigment to gather in my lip lines. Or maybe it's just not so pale that it is doing that. It has a nice kind of milkiness, but without, it seems, the problems that that milkiness sometimes causes in glosses. The only thing about it is the weird smell. I wonder if maybe they're trying to do some kind of spiced cocoa thing. It could also be just that my senses are heightened right now, like my sense of smell and taste is not super reliable at this very moment in time. So I'm definitely gonna keep this in the mix and keep trying this. This is exactly the kind of thing that I was hoping to come across on this search. And I don't think I own anything like this, any glosses with color like this. I'm just so impressed by what a pale color it is, what a true brown it is, how easy it is for me to wear. It's kind of a unicorn, wow. Not sticky at all either. Like it's not leaving behind anything really difficult to scrub away as I remove it, which actually might be an issue for longevity. Obviously that's not something I can test today, but I'll come back and let you know. All right, up next, another gloss from Juvia's Place. So Flower Girl, <laughs> this one that ended up just being blue, it was in a box there. Maybe I should have opened the box and just taken a peek, but I didn't. I looked at the imagery, I looked at the online imagery and I was fairly sure it was like a purplish taupe and it's not. This though wasn't in a box, it was like this, just with a little bit of a wrapper on it. So I'm able to see through the plastic of the tube that it actually is a taupe color. It is from the Juvia's Place Coffee Shop collection and it's in the shade Brown Sugar. Ooh, that looks promisingly kind of gray, kind of green. Green gray? No, that's what I've always wanted. Like a greenish gray taupe gloss. Oh, 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 this is different from the other gloss. It's really thin. Hmm, hmm like a glaze. Oh my gosh, I really like the formula. So darker than the Essence gloss, clearly. Thin, really, really thin. Again, kind of like a glaze, but with enough body to be there, especially when layered. Nothing like the other Juvia's Place gloss. So the Flower Girl gloss is marketed as the glass lip gloss. It's like that thick jelly-like thing. This is, it just says the coffee shop lip gloss, but I'm finding the formula way more elevated. Like this feature feels really high end to me. This feels like something that a brand like Merit or Make Beauty would come out with formula wise and color wise too. I mean, I did have to scour the drugstore. Okay, I was in there for a long time. It seems like we're having hit after hit. I mean, with the exception of the first one. Okay, so there's just been two. It seems like these last two have just been shockingly successful, but it did take work, y'all. This reminds me of a slightly more pigmented version of the Merit lip oil. Actually, it kind of reminds me of that formula wise as well. Maybe a little bit beefier, but just in, in the, like the thinness and the fact that it's like totally non-sticky. I feel like they could get away with marketing this as something like a pigmented lip oil because it feels that far from what we mostly call a gloss. Oh my gosh, I think this is my favorite of the three so far. I wish it didn't, again, I wish it didn't smell like coffee. It might bother me less at a time when my sense of smell isn't going haywire. And also now that it's on there, it's not as bad. It's just it's not my super favorite, like coffee scented makeup products, but I feel kind of willing to put up with it for the color and the formula. Whereas with the Essence, oh, that's that blotted. Oh my gosh, doesn't this feel like the sibling of A Royal Scandal, Merit 1990, those lip colors that I really love? I mean, as coffee scents go, it's a, a really lovely one. It's There's nothing abhorrent about it. There was something to me a little weird about the Essence one. So I feel like between the two of them, this is the one that would be the most likely to, you know, wear and wear and wear. Okay, the fourth product that I have is not a gloss. It's not a bullet lipstick either. It's kind of like the bridging product. And it is something that I've owned before, way back in the day. If you're an OG, if you've been here forever, you will remember me loving the shade London from NYX. I had the soft matte lip cream, which is what this is, an iconic old NYX product. And I also had the lip liner. And I think the lip liner was out of stock when I was there at Ulta. I, otherwise I would have actually gotten it in like 
worked on the whole thing. I think I remember the liner being even a little bit weirder than the cream, having like maybe even more of a yellow tinge. And at the time, which was before I really understood my undertone, before I really understood fully what I was looking for in terms of lip color, I already understood that I struggled to find nude lips that had that je ne sais quoi on me, that sort of muted quality on me. They would always be bright instead of muted, even if they looked muted on other people. And at the time, NYX London was one of the only ones, if not the only one that I felt like was sort of approaching that. So I'm curious to know if I still feel that it is that way or what. I actually wonder if maybe it's going to be much more orange than what I prefer now, but I just don't really know. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that looks really, really, really orange. Orangey peach to me. I like the formula. I remember eventually becoming unimpressed with the longevity of this formula. It just wears away really quickly. And that was why I eventually decluttered this product, even though I actually had it for quite a long time and I wore it a lot and I wore it in a lot of videos back in the day. But from where I'm sitting now with what I know now about color, with the lip products that I've acquired since then, what I've come to really love, this to me, it's a shade of peach. Back then, I was much more interested in wearing peach. I, I was more comfortable with it. I felt like peach was a color that was good for me. I think as I've aged and it's been, you know, five or six years, it's it's been what it is, is like the difference between my late 20s, early 30s and my late 30s, you know? So as I've aged over these years and I've moved into my late 30s, I have become less fond of peach for me because I feel like it kind of makes a girl out of me. I just, I don't think it's unflattering. I mean, I think for someone with my coloring, peach isn't a bad choice. It just reminds me of, of my youth and it kind of makes me feel like I'm trying to evoke the makeup looks of a younger version of myself and I've grown away from it for that reason. But I will say is that for a peach, for me, this is a very wearable one. It's like a spiced peach. You know what I mean? It's kind of reading as a spiced peach on me. And a lot of brands that make what they would call a spiced peach on me, it just looks like a bright peach. So that would be great if I was looking for a spiced peach, but I'm just not looking for that anymore. And I think that if I didn't know about this already, I wouldn't have picked it on this trawl through Ulta. I wouldn't have looked at it and thought, oh, that looks like it could be a grungy option for a lip color at the drugstore. I just pulled it for old times sake to see how my reaction to the color has maybe changed. And yeah, it's amazing to me that at the time, this was an extremely unusual, like off color in my lip collection. And now to me, it's a very straight down the middle kind of color. Okay, we're moving into the wilds of the bullet lipsticks. I think I kind of have high hopes for some of these. First up is another one from Essence. So I was looking down the Essence display and I looked down at where the lipsticks were and it has like the little color chip in the front of every row. And one of them just screamed at me, like this might be what you're looking for. They all just looked normal, like pink, and then this one looked grungy. But you know, you can't tell anything from those little color swatches, so we'll see. Here's a lipstick. It's in the shade Legendary and that looks kind of like what the color swatch looked like in the store. Hmm, but the lipstick itself looks a lot more orange than that. I mean, that looks like it has some purple in it, like almost a grayish. And the lipstick looks like more of a straight, hmm. It feels amazing. It feels like chocolate, melting chocolate, creamy. Formula feels amazing. It smells like very faintly of sort of like a spiced chocolate, a much more pleasant smell than the gloss had. Like vanilla chai cookies or something. Okay, the color has impressed me for a drugstore lipstick, for a drugstore nude. It has impressed me, but it hasn't quite rung my bell. You know what I mean? I have a Royal Scandal by Gucci in my makeup drawer. I have Merit 1990, Maybelline Con Grey, and this is just, again, a little bit closer to center than any of those and has a drop more maybe orange than I would like it to have for it to really read as grungy on me. But it is a very beautiful rose. It's not too dark, especially blotted. It feels like it might be a dupe for a Lisa Eldridge color that I'm just not quite sure. And I don't have my other lipsticks down here to do any comparisons. There are so many of these getting through all eight of them that I felt like it would be chaos if I tried to do that. But it kind of reminds me of Velvet Sorcery and Velvet Affair, like the most recent Lisa Eldridge lipstick acquisitions of mine. And it's really wearable. And again, I quite like the formula. So definitely not a miss as a lipstick, but I'm not as excited about it color-wise as I was about the Essence Gloss or the Juvia's Place Gloss. So grungier than some, a decent option for someone at the drugstore who is looking for what I'm looking for, but like a mild version of that, you know? Okay, next up, this may be the one that I had the low 
lowest hopes about because I couldn't find the display. It was just stuck in with some other lipsticks from a different display. I don't even think they had the display. And I just, I kept looking through this plastic at the color and that's basically what I was able to see. And doesn't it look a little bit like an icy sort of pinky grayish? It's the Ultimate Lip Suede from Revlon and it's in the shade Influencer, which also kind of cracks me up clicks up and down. That's weird. And when I looked it up, it looked like it might be sort of like an off pink with like a little bit of a weird gray iciness to it. And it looked pale. There's on my bottom lip and not my top. Surprisingly, my lips put better on me. No smell, which is kind of nice right now. Okay, it's pink. It's really in some ways just a straight pink, but it's a very wearable pink because it is in a vacuum mixed with some slightly off tones. If it weren't, it would be really garish pink on me. And in fact, it's sort of soft soft in its own way on me. It's working and I feel like that means that compared to other pinks, it's on the light side and it's on the extremely neutral side. Just not quite weird enough, again, to make me lose my mind over it, but I can see why it ended up in this pile, you know? Let's blot it. I'm also not mad at the formula. It's interesting. It feels a little bit like a slightly more pigmented version of the NARS Afterglow lip balm that I've been really into. It felt super easy to just slather it on, quite melty, but it's not too shiny. I mean, it says ultimate suede. It's just, it's not super matte, but I think it's supposed to be, I would guess, I mean, I don't know anything about this product, but I would guess that it's supposed to be a balmy, nourishing thing that leans matte rather than glossy, which is nice. And yeah, it's brighter than I would prefer. I'm not going to be like reaching for this over and over again. If someone wants it, like a friend who comes to my house, I'll probably just give it away because pink like this, even a pink that's really Really wearable on me isn't my favorite thing to wear. But again, the fact that it is wearable in this way, it's almost like reminds me a little bit of Merit Baby in terms of how wearable it is for me, how much it's suiting me as a pink. I don't love it or even really like it, but it could be worse. The color, I mean. The formula might be my favorite one of all of the ones I've tried so far, partly because it doesn't have a scent. The Juvia's Place Gloss, the coffee gloss, absent the scent is my favorite formula that I've tried so far. This felt really innovative to me, really, really cool. But just for a bullet product, the formula is very impressive. But the color, I don't really love or like. Okay, this one too feels like it could be a bit of a wild card. It's definitely the darkest. Yeah, the most like some sort of red or mauve of anything else. The packaging really intrigues me too. It might be one of the reasons I ended up choosing it. Oh, and the color. <laughs> the color is called Le Wood Nonchalant. Le Wood Nonchalant. The Nonchalant Forest. It's a L'Oreal Color Riche lipstick. It reminds me of YSL packaging. And you can see why I picked the color, right? It's like a brownish mauve. It smells a little bit fruity but not in a repellent way, in actually a little bit of a high-end way. Look at the embossing too and the shape of the tip. It's kind of nice. They were going for something and they kind of got there. Let's see how it looks. This is also screaming Lisa Eldridge colors. It's really matte. Okay, I have a lot to say about this. First of all, the scent and I guess a little bit flavor, it's very impressive. It smells like a Joe Malone Cassis scent to me. Like it, it really smells like high-end fragrance that is blackberry based or Cassis based, like blackberry syrup. I really am finding it unexpected to come across a scent like this in a lip product at the drugstore. So there's that. It's really matte. It uh, gave me that super blended, soft, stained popsicle lip. I blurred the lip line a lot with a brush, but there's just something about the intense pigment of it, the matte quality of it, also probably the fact that it's like the seventh lip product in a row that I've tried on. It reminds me so much of the Lisa Eldridge Velvet formula. It reminds reminds me specifically of Velvet Sorcery, which I can't compare it to even if I had everything down here because I decluttered Velvet Sorcery because it was so hard to apply it without it going patchy. And it's interesting, this, I wouldn't say exactly that it's going patchy. In fact, it's not, not in the way that Velvet Sorcery did on me, but there is something about that stainy depth that is reminiscent not just of the color, but like the entire lipstick. It's definitely a burgundy that I would wear, you know, not as super grungy or super different 
different as I was hoping for in the way that those Lisa Eldridge lipsticks never are. You know what I mean? Like the ones that are marketed as straying really far from the center never actually do. They always are just still pretty normal colors. Like she has yet to release something that's truly different. And this isn't that different to me. It's just like a vampy lip, but it's a vampy lip that is grounded enough in, again, neutral tones, grungy undertones, browns, enough for me to actually wear it and feel good in it. So that is, that's yeah, cool. Again, not a smash absolute blow your mind hit, but not a miss. I should have saved it for last though. It's gonna be well, coming off okay. Okay, last but hopefully not least, one that I actually do have high hopes for. So I came across this just as I was checking out. I was about to leave Ulta and I realized I hadn't looked at the Ulta brand lipsticks yet. So we took a look at the Ulta brand lipsticks display and I saw this lip color, Dusty Mauve. The packaging is not bad either. It's like kind of weighty. Look at that. Uh, Dusty Mauve if I ever saw one. Where was this in my video about trying to dupe Gone Grage? This formula also feels nice. Ah, oh, it's not too pigmented. I kind of like that. Okay, yeah. This is an actual grungy color. This is a good color. Y'all, the find of the video. Here, right at the very end, the find of the video. So it's not scented. It has that kind of the smell of a cream lipstick, you know? But not even, but it's not strong. I mean, if you really, really smell it close up, you're like, oh, that's makeup. But it doesn't smell like chemicals, and it's also not scented. It's lovely and creamy and nourishing to the lips, but it's not not intensely opaque. It's not as much of that hybrid sort of chapsticky formula as the Merit lipstick, which is like my holy grail formula, my favorite to which all others are compared. It's not quite that level of sheer, but this is a full two coats. You know, like I layered it on, I layered it again. It's really thick, full opacity and blot it down to one. I don't know. I mean, that is acting kind of like the Merit formula. And the first swipe was a little bit semi-sheer. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, it's not doing that thing where it's like melting and getting super pigmented and getting all over the place. It's like keeping itself together, which is what we require for lipstick these days. So the formula is unexpectedly great. This is just the Ulta lipstick, but the color, the color, I mean, that is a wearable grungy nude if I ever saw one. Maybe kind of close to Gone Grage. My guess is that it's a little bit more on the mauve side, like a cross between Gone Grage and My Lips But Better. I love it. I feel like this is going to go straight into my drawer and straight into rotation. I feel like this is the win, the number one crowning win. It makes me realize that one of the things that I feel like was tough about this one, the second to last one, L'Oreal Color Riche in Le Wood <laughs> Nonchalant, is that it was just so pigmented really, really intensely pigmented and rich and dark in color for me. So beautiful, grungy in its way, but just so much less effortlessly wearable. This is like an effortlessly wearable grungy nude. I can't believe it. Slay, Ulta, slay. <laughs> like, welcome to how I'm gonna look in every video over the next two weeks, at least lips wise. It's gonna be tough not to wear this. I'm really here for it. It, it feels like it has a little bit of that purple in it, which is the thing that it was so hard to find when I was trying to do Gone Grage. Maybe Ulta saw that video and created this lipstick just for me. Okay, let's recap. Let's rank. I'm going to rank, I think, my from top to bottom. And what I'm ranking them in terms of is my excitement to wear them. Number one, I would totally wear this. Like this is, it's like my new favorite lipstick. I would 1000% totally wear this. I wish Merit had a color like this. This is weirder and grungier than anything Merit does have. And in a formula that does a lot of the same things. The thing that I'm the second most excited about is the Juvia's Place Coffee Shop Lip Gloss in Brown Sugar. Again, the scent isn't my absolute favorite, but it's preferable to a lot of the other things I smelled today. And it's just, it's the fact that it's this really thin, non-sticky, nourishing oil gloss type of feel. And the fact that the brown, it seems like it has maybe a little bit of green mixed in, like something to keep it super neutral. I loved the way that this felt and the way that it looked. And this too, I can't wait to wear again. My third favorite is probably the Essence Gloss. Again, because this color and opacity of color, but still wearability, is so difficult to find. I'm gonna have to do some reading about the scent to understand what they were trying to do and try to get past it. Might actually be a deal breaker, but again, I'm leaving that aside for now. And that aside, this was an amazing, amazing color. And the formula was lovely and it felt good on the lips and everything. So that's probably number three. Number four, I think is gonna go to the Essence Lipstick, which was a little bit grungier, a little bit less orange. It's not orange by any means, but you know. A wearable middle of the road, not, not grungy neutral, but all things considered, I would rather wear something like one of my Mara 
Wet Lips or my Gucci Lips than this. The formula is also really good. I didn't fall in love with it, but I don't have any complaints about it. After that, I'm gonna give it to Le Wood Nonchalant, the L'Oreal Color Riche Super Matte, absolutely a dupe for YSL. I mean, that has to be what this is. It has to be a dupe for that YSL matte lip color that came out pretty recently and a really successful dupe of that. In fact, even though I tend to like colors like this more than colors like this, I'm actually gonna put this in front of the, the essence because this, the execution of it intrigues me so much. The scent, the formula, the packaging, the name. Like I, I actually am kind of into this even though it was a lot on me today. Actually, I'm actually gonna bump the essence gloss because of the scent issue and put this ahead of it. The more I think about it, the more impressed I am by this. And I'm kind of curious about what the other colors are. I'm gonna look this up. I was just like grabbing stuff at the drugstore. I don't know from <laughs> the stuff. So I'm gonna look this up and find out more about it. Yeah, it felt very high end. And to me that unseats even the really amazing color of this because the weird scent of this made it feel very like gross. Like the side of drugstore makeup that makes me shy away sometimes from drugstore makeup. Whereas this is like conspicuously missing that side. I mean, this is just like, you could tell me this is $45. I would believe you. I would believe you this is $45. So in spite of the fact that the color was my absolute favorite, this is in third place now, the L'Oreal. Essence Extreme Care is in fourth place. If you know anything about the scent of that, let me know. Essence Legendary Semi-Matte Lipstick is in fifth place. I guess that the other Juvia's Place gloss is in sixth place just because it is like a slightly taupey purple version of a super sheer gloss. And that's something that I would be more likely to wear than a pink and a peach. And that's what's left, right? Actually, no, Revlon Color Stay is in sixth place because it was a wearable pink for me. And sometimes I will wear a wearable pink and the formula really impressed me. This is, I, again, I'm gonna, I'm kind of gonna look this up and see what el other colors it comes in. This was the only color they had at the Ulta when I was there. The Revlon Color Stay Ultimate Suede. Yeah, it was so wearable, easy to apply, nourishing, impressive. So it's in sixth place, weird blue Juvia's Place gloss in seventh place, <laughs> and poor NYX London. My old favorite is in eighth place. Put it on for this video, never gonna wear it again. Wow, wild, wild. Some real hits, some intriguing things in the middle ground, and some misses. We love a dynamic video. The top two are the two big hits. The Juvia's Place Coffee Gloss, which comes in a whole bunch of other shades of brown, by the way. This is just the one that I thought would suit me the best. But if you're not quite looking for what I'm looking for in undertones, but you are interested in a brown gloss, formula's fantastic. And then the winningest one, happily, is the one in which I'm ending the video and I'm just gonna go wear it around for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching this and you know what I'm gonna say. If you know of any grungy lip colors at the drugstore that I didn't happen to stumble across on my rounds at Ulta, let me know what they are. And if there are enough of them and they all look likely enough, I'll do it again. I mean, you know what I like now, right? You know what I like? Lay it on me. Let's build a longer list of this kind of thing. Thank you to whoever it was who originally made this suggestion. I'm sorry that I didn't screenshot your comment and I don't remember what you said exactly or who you are, but I'm so appreciative and curious to know if this even can be done with blushes, for example. I feel like lips have the widest range, so I was able to find eight to go on. It might be harder to do with something like blush, but if it can be done, I will do it. Thank you to all of you commenters and those of you who are subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate you and everybody watching. I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.